Stop. quite a busy couple of months this past summer and I didn't forget to load just been caught up with other things but wanted to share with you guys today some more additional stuff that we dealt with at the Delta and as I'm gonna be trying something a little different I'll be sharing with you some more uh, in-depth of how I approach most of these areas in the Delta and to give you some insight on how I like to focus and target to catch these guys I hope you guys enjoy the footage and don't forget to subscribe now you know why people like to target them huh? Much early in the morning I was trying to target the edge of the grass lines while my brother was primarily using a whopper plopper and focused on preliminary top water action. Um, I never really have that much luck on top water. I don't think I've used it enough which is something I should improve on but overall my goals are always to just go ahead to the edge because that's where I've had most of the success. Now the tide was just now starting to come up so I assumed a lot of these fish were already coming out of the grass lines. But it didn't seem like that was the case because most of the fish that my brother was catching were already on the wider yeah. open areas and something yeah. i think i should have really been targeting more okay. i did try the whopper plopper but unfortunately yeah i don't get that much luck on it so i'm gonna have to honestly say one of the biggest headaches i ever get when i fish out in the delta in the summertime is the amount of vegetation and growth that occurs out there is ridiculous as you can see here i'm trying to clean off a yamamoto single worm on a four rod offset hook um, at this point my worm was completely destroyed because it brushed up against enough resistance of this vegetation so that's one thing that just comes with the trade of fishing out here in the delta is you got to be prepared for you know, trying to target these areas without trying to get so caught up in this vegetation because it will put a downer on your day. Another one, huh? <laughs> well, there's something in there? Just tell them large Marge sent you, huh? <laughs> oh, it's a good old fun part of the Delta. Oh wow. <laughs> it's the only way I could do it for now. The thing is, like, when the wind and the current's pushing me, I can't target where I want to target. So I have to just allow it to point where I'm going to go. So part of the subject here we're recovering was the fact that I was using the micro power pole anchor. Um, due to the delta currents bringing, you know, a good amount of tide coming in, um, and I can't really stay in position with the PDL system, the pedal drive, um, I have to use the spike, which is very beneficiary. Um, I can actually just stay in location and that way I don't have to work with, you know, being pushed around so much. But on the downside is you're only limited to where you're going to pivot around. So in this area, I wasn't really trying to target, but I figured, you know, instead of turning all the way around and making it more difficult, I might as well just go ahead and try to fish it out. Because last time I was here... So I'm going to do something a little different this time. As you can see in the area that I'm fishing, it's not my primary target, but you know what? Fishing against the sunrise while it's in the background or the foreground, and then just staring at it in this smoked up filled skies. This almost looks like a sunset in Hawaii, but it's actually the Delta in California. I get a lot of peace and tranquility coming out here. 
not just in the delta, but in any body of water, especially out here early in the morning. There's something about just being in peace and quiet, only hearing the sounds of Mother Nature around you, the birds chirping. It truly makes me very grateful for all the friends and family that I've come across in my life and for how blessed I am. And there's a big thank you to everybody who still watches this channel and supports me. I appreciate you all. I'm gonna need a Red Bull, sir. Nope. I'll let you catch all the small fish for me. I'm gonna show you a nice big one there, buddy, after I get my Red Bull. And no, I just did not try to cast this with the bail closed. What the hell are you doing here, boy? How the hell you get all this gunk off? If I was a fish and I seen this being thrown out, I'd be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'm not eating that. <laughs> Why don't you clean it for crying out loud? You don't even respect me as a fish offering me this nasty ass bait. <laughs> I said, I feel sorry for the dumb bird who actually hits it. Yeah, he's lucky to still have his, his feathers intact. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is a... Uh... Ah, shit. What the... It's not coming up. It's fighting, but it's not coming up. Can't get it up. Don't tell my wife. I got some pills for you, buddy. Don't tell my wife I can't get it up. It's embarrassing that the bass knows I can't get it up. Lord, help me, Mother Jesus. I can't get the bass up. No, no, don't. Whoa, come on. He wants. He's like Lenny Kravitz. He's like, I want to get away. <laughs> you want to get him? Uh, at this point, whoever's close, brother. What? You got a good one, huh? I don't know. I mean, I'm running on six-pound test. Oh. oh yeah. Ooh, that's a nice one. Uh, Austin, that's uh, a big one. Uh, oh, my Lord. Ted Pebble cooling the grass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, finally. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, Hi. Hey. Hello, Mr. Hobie you? owner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, let's take that hell? baby out. Yeah, let me touch it. You know, I want to touch it first. You can only touch the grass, but you can't touch the fish. Hey, that's a chunky. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, he's got a busted lip and everything. Damn. All right, buddy. Hell yeah. Good old Yakimotos. Good old Yakimotos. Hey, look at that. Take a picture. Shit. Damn. I just had to be patient with that one, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Good size, buddy. Yep, you still got it. Still got it. Just gotta be patient. Should I weigh him? He's kind of fat, dude. All right, I guess I'm gonna cut him loose. I'm not gonna weigh him. Ain't there for you, buddy. Ain't there for you. There, there, I think that's gonna be... Let me see, I'm gonna get a nice shot. We'll feel in the fucking sun. Right, right there, buddy. I got you, buddy, right there. That's awesome. All right, Mr. Bass, let's go. <laughs> Belly flop. <laughs> oh, it's gonna bruise it later. <laughs> Man. Yeah, including the grass, it's 10 pounds. <laughs> what is it about the damn worm? 
See, I think what it was, Phil, is with your whopping and plopping and this subtlety, that triggered the bite. I got another one. Yeah, I got another one, dude. I think. No, oh, oh dude. Heck, there was a good one. Oh, another one. It's not that big, though. There's some here, bud. Yeah. Another one. I got another one. Ah, oh, dude. He took me in the grass. There we go again. Again. Yep. Damn. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Another one. Another one. Oh, this one might be bigger. This one might be bigger, bro. Oh, check that out. Oh, yeah. Another one. Right on the edge, Hector. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There you go. Hey, stuff. <laughs> and another one for in the sunrise sunset however you want to call it baby <laughs> go ahead mr bash tell him um i forgot the words he hasn't uploaded too much but subscribe <laughs> did he hit you see you feel him right yeah. He's good. There you go. Come here, baby. Are you tired? There you are. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, she's heavy. Heck yeah. There we go. She wanted the jig, so I shook it in her face. She wanted the jig, so I put it in her face and her mouth. I call this a Lugo fish. This is a nice size. Well, I'm definitely happy with this one. It's got a nice little shimmer to him. Healthy. Oh, it's got a busted up lip. Look at that. All right, buddy. You're free to go. Makes me go. Sometimes to find the right fish, you gotta go through hell. Ew! Bugs! Uh. Alright, let's see how this place does. Pretty sure there's some fish in here. Just the kind of quality that we're looking at. Just a moment to land. Go. Oh no. I need your one here.
All right. Thanks for talking about. There you go all right bud thanks for uh, playing along appreciate it and another one hey man i know i can get some really good shots on this so yeah uh just basically approaching it with the finesse with the micro jig and honestly this thing it's uh it's a really good feel a good fish let him go now all right bud you're good to go so now that i know that they're there let's continue so that's not bad, it's like under two minutes I caught him. And let's see who else is there. So just basically working it slow. Um, I'm sure these size of fish, they're really just targeting a lot of the smaller. This flapping hog, or you know, it's not even a flapping hog, it's a it's a KVD bait, but it's basically it has really nice action. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I got it in the California craw color, and just the way it works, you're always getting those those little two pieces those wings flapping and i think is what really brings a lot of presentation to it uh, it also helps too that i'm running six pound test line so yeah you talk about finesse i mean i'm gonna get a little concerned if i get something bigger than that what i just got earlier because they really can do no damage on that but yeah see willing to go to these kind of spots and locations where you know it's like a good area for the for them to ambush a prey is the ideal area you want to try to target now i did get hit up by a couple people online on facebook um, in regards of you know they were just starting out into kayak and they wanted to learn exactly a little bit more about kayak fishing um, i'd say simplify whatever you got going on uh, make it easy don't get it too complicated work your way up unless you're trying to do any kind of tournaments or compete and then if you get to that point then yeah I think it's okay to continue with uh what how do you say uh investing in something like that because i don't think uh you have to spend that much money to come out here and just to get a good time and just to fish for these bass or anything in general just as you long just as long as you know what your 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 ultimate goal is then it's it's pretty achievable see like right now just slowly working it back and i know there's bass there and then yeah oh well Maybe not. <laughs> and this is just like some of the things that you gotta work with. See, the nice thing is like with a micro jig like this and it's got a, a weed guard, is you won't get caught on some of those, but you can always just shake it off before you actually bring it back into the kayak. It's just pretty easy. The only downside is it starts to float a little bit and the chances of getting it again, eh, pretty rare, but it's not impossible. All right, what do you get? Uh, just caught up. All right, I think we're gonna blow this spot in just a bit because I don't know how much more I can fish it. There's a couple of areas here that seem promising, but I'm really hoping I can just get one more before I pull out of here. So, yeah, so you can't tell if that was a plant or a bush, but whatever vegetation it was, it was actual fish. But it's, uh, it, it's just something that you end up developing over time when it comes to fishing through these kind of conditions um, you know if you're always going to have an exposed hook uh, chances of getting hung up is way greater in comparison to where you have a weed guard like this one um, but i think just like as chad hoover mentions you know it's all about being time on the water so you know spending a lot of your time out here and really just getting a, a good feel for for what your capabilities are the conditions and adjusting like right now really lucky at the moment that there's not high winds over here pushing us around but i think we're probably already past the high tide it's going to start slowly dropping now and i think by the time it actually drops to a decent size you won't be able to fish this area this place will just be about two feet below right now we're at four feet yeah in a kayak you're not going to be able to get really get through here unless you have a hobie but i'm not saying it's not impossible not possible but you will get you will get caught up over here. See, there we go. Darn.
Did the bite? Did the bite shut off for you? Hey, how long is that kayak? Uh, 12 foot. Is it? Yeah. I guess it's pretty wide. It's a big boat. Not as big as the fish you're about to catch, though. Exactly. <laughs> Tight line, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you.